All right. Uh, just to recap, we're picking up where we left off from yesterday. Uh, we uh, quit at the create a complex JSX element within the free code camp content. And I'm going to jump over there. I think I'm in the JavaScript, so give it a second. Let me jump out of this and jump into the front end library. And uh, I think we did this one yesterday. Yeah, because we added that comment. I just didn't run it. Yeah, let's go to the next one. So we were on okay. render HTML elements to the DOM. But before we do that, I was going to recap for everybody that wasn't here. Um, we kind of just went through the basics of what's happening within, within React in the sense that there's a lot going on under the hood, so to speak. Um, if you notice this information here, and this Babel, uh, this is kind of like similar to, uh, if you've ever worked with Bootstrap um, or jQuery, then uh, you know that these uh, source uh, scripts, they are uh, fetching a package, uh, which is React DOM. And so that is needed to, to work within um, react and so we would say this information for our script and our HTML has a div with the ID of root okay that's critical because our const variable is going to um, be rendering something by that ID hmm. so um, what's going to be happening is this is what the variable JSX is going to be holding and it will be rendering this information into the root because we've told it here under the hood react dom dot render and so render is just a fancy word for uh, display uh, whatever is being held within this variable and then this comma and then the next action will be document dot get element by id so within the dom there's the document object and then we're telling the page to find the id of root which in this situation is this div it's an empty div so when we're rendering it we're telling it to populate what was in being held in this variable the constant the constant jsx and we told it to populate this these elements but the trick is you can only populate one element parent at a time there can be many children elements like all of these h1 p and the unordered list but there can only be one uh, parent tag you couldn't have you couldn't have these alone and they would populate because there would there would be an error that would return so that's something to note um, i highly recommend going through those lessons on your own uh, we have the recording i highly recommend going through that um, this was us just toying around. We were getting into a discussion about var and const and let, and uh, we just kind of did some demos of that. So that's not relevant to today. Um, but um, if we go live, then we'll we'll see uh, when it populates. Uh, we'll see that information populate. It might be that there's an error in my code because of the constant. So let me 
Can I ask a quick question while you debug that? Yeah. I noticed that this is all in a script tag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about that? Was there a comment? Oh, DK. All right, DK, that's cool. Um, this is like not uh, probably how you would do it. Uh, you would probably want to have an external reference to a, a sheet that is a .js. But um, to just toy around with it, we're just using these um, these boilerplate um, script script uh, within the HTML just to keep it simple. Because uh, this is just kind of like a playground. We're not really uh, this is not really going to end up as a real live page. This is just uh, what what the curriculum in the each challenge is. Then we're just throwing it into a playground uh, HTML so that we can just toy around with it. But let me see what this does. Yeah, so once I commented all that stuff out, um, we, we're rendering this information. So I could say uh, Tamari and Andrew. And I'll save. And then when we come over here, boom. Well, I misspelled your name, Tamari, I'm sorry. But yeah, you get the point. Yeah, so whatever we're telling it to render, it's gonna render these elements on the page. And that's the kind of like the hello world of React is render. And we're rendering it by creating the HTML using the variable uh, JSX. So does that make sense with everybody? Not complete sense, but some sense. I'm guessing it does because I'm, I'm not here. Sort of. sort of, yeah. It doesn't have to make complete sense, but yeah, I highly recommend just going back and watching the video from yesterday. It'll make a lot more sense after you watch that. Um, and go through the lessons yourself. Um, that's, that's always the uh, surefire way. Uh, but I'm gonna just commit this real quick. Um, uh, reviewed with uh, new people. All right, I'm gonna sync. All right, so I gotta commit. All right, we had another chat. Okay, so you can't hear me. Um, how about now? It was me, not you. Oh, it was your problem. Okay, okay, all right. All right, so let's get back into it. All right, so looking at the next lesson, uh, what we did was we added in some comments also uh, to create comments in, um, in React. You have to use these um, curly braces, and then within it, you have to use a forward slash asterisk. So this combination and this combination allows you to create a comment within React. And without that, you don't have a comment. So obviously, uh, we commented the code, but none of that showed up. But if we inspect, then we should be able to see the comment. Or should we? Good question. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I'm wondering where the comment is. I guess it's not showing up, but hmm. interesting. Have you saved your phone? Yes, I have. Okay. 
maybe that's not something that oh maybe it is like uh pat was saying something like um uh, it's like it's similar to php and the one thing i know about php is that uh, php scripting oh it is like php in that way okay one of the neat things about php and obviously about react is that we don't see any react script here do we right we only see what we told it to render in terms of the parent element the div so we have a div within with this is the id root and we told it to create a div which it did and within that div there's these children and that's all we told it to do right that is a script within react but none of the react script is showing here therefore none of none of the uh, comments either so it's kind of like the developer um, hides information from the end user so it's kind of useful for the developer in the sense that content can be rendered um but there's hidden information in the script itself on the developer side that the uh the end user doesn't notice and will never notice because that information is not populated in the browser in the document in the dom so, huh, that's kind of neat anyway that was an aside mm -hmm. but did, did that kind of like make sense to everybody what I was talking about there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, I think that's the beauty of things like React and um, each of these frameworks is that you render something, but when you're rendering it, then it's almost like, um, I don't know. You're like the the puppeteer, but there's no strings. You know what I'm saying? Um, you're manipulating the DOM, but there's no trace of you manipulating the drop the DOM um, and how you manipulated it. Like nobody would know that we're developing this in React because uh, there's no trace of it within the DOM. Uh, none of the Except for this, this is the only way they would be able to know that we developed in React. But in terms of the script itself, oh, well, wait a minute, I'm wrong. Or am I? Elliot. Yeah. Okay, I heard what you were saying earlier because I was busy, I couldn't um, say anything. Uh huh. Um, Okay, um, what you were talking about was the encapsulation. Like most of like, uh, frameworks are there to just make um, building a program or uh, or, or mm -hmm. a application easier. Because if you if you have to like write the whole code yourself, to, to be too large, like it write is a, a very like short. This thing. If, you, if you just write an hello word or something, you have, you have to write it directly. It will be too much. So frameworks are there to actually make building application more easier for you. So. The framework would like have keywords, and when um, you like you write out the keywords, they will actually um, um, compile something different, so, like pop up on the, like um, that will be used to like render the whole thing, renders to completely different things. I, I think um, uh, React AI transpiles also it doesn't compile. You no, know, they are com they are trans they are, they are language that translates um, their compilation languages and all, all of those. Okay. So the point is that. Um, all, all of like when you actually render the whole thing, the um, React, the React engine, or something, actually um, convert like those those things to like what is going to like um, work on like the on the browser. Okay, interesting. I think let me, I think I saw something on like the official site earlier, like particular. Uh, hold on, let me check. 
Okay. Maybe that'll be something that we firm up along the way, but um, it's probably best that we just move on to the next part. Thank you, All right. All right, so let's look at this, uh, the next uh, render HTML elements to the DOM. So far you've learned that JSX is a convenient tool to write readable HTML within JavaScript. With React, we can render this JSX directly to the HTML DOM using React's rendering API known as React DOM. React DOM offers a simple method to render React elements to the DOM, which looks like this. React DOM dot render, open paren component to render, comma target node, close paren. All right, so if you noticed in the React, like the, the uh, other content that we were working in, the component to render was JSX. And then it was comma document dot, uh, what was it, get element by ID. And then it was, we we're getting it by the element ID of node or root. Root. Okay. Um, Second part is selector. Yeah, the target node selector. So we were getting it get element by ID root. Uh, so we were going by the ID root. And then this was the component that we were going to render, which was the div that looked something like this. All right. So this is accessing the React DOM API. That is kind of like mapping out, you know, what we're going to be doing. All right, where the first argument is the React element or component that you want to render. All right, that's what we talked about, like JSX. And the second argument is the DOM node that you want to render the component to. It's, uh, this is like where we want to place our component. <clears throat> As you would expect, React dot, dot render must be called after the JSX element declarations. All right, so yeah, we had to have J JSX was first, then we could do this function. Just like how you must declare variables before using them. The code editor has a simple JSX component. Use the react dom dot render method to render this component to the page. All right, so we're gonna render it to the page. We've declared it, now we can use the rendering. Um, you can pass define JSX elements directly in as the first argument and use document.getElementById to select the DOM node to render them to. This is a div with the ID equal to challenge node available for you to use. Make sure you don't change this JSX constant. All right, so we're only working here, and we're gonna be accessing a React DOM, and we're gonna render it, and then we're gonna say JSX is our constant, comma, document, dot get element by ID and then uh, running out of real estate here. Okay. All right, then we're gonna get ID equal okay. um, challenge. Uh, Elliot. Yes. If you're trying to get an ID within, uh, like you're going to like select, uh, select, um, uh, an element by, by its ID, like in a JavaScript system, how do you go about it? Suppose we like document or get element by ID and bracket um, uh, the um, column and um, the, the, the ID name, right? Now you don't need the ID equals to ah, so you don't have to say ID. So it's already yeah. saying ID, yeah. yeah. You're right, you're right. So I don't even need this. It's already... Yeah knowing it's an ID. Yeah, yes. you're right. Okay. Okay. So 
So we did that. Nice. Why do you have two? Oh, never mind. Never mind. What was the, what was your thinking? Why did you have um, two parentheses in there at the end? But then I I saw. Oh yeah, the uh, challenge node is its own parentheses. Yeah. And yeah, so this is the component, and this is the selector. Yeah. We're gonna get the element by ID. Like what that does it renders it renders the component into the selector. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is team. this is where this is where it's gonna go, but this is the variable the component a constant of the thing that we wanna place in there. So and this is that. Everything inside of this paren is but it, and always remember that it can only be one parent uh, element, but it can have many children elements within it. So commonly, you would place a div in there as an element, and it can have multiple, as many children as you want, you can place in there. Okay. Uh, you need to wrap the J6 in brackets, I guess. JSX. Yeah, the JSX eleven. Yeah, well, in the React DOM dot render, you need to put it in a bracket HTML. Yeah. This part. No, the React DOM dot render. When you pass JSX, you have to put it in wrap it in a bracket. Like uh, HTML heading. Yeah, yeah. It would need to be in brackets. Yes. Like the H1, for example, uh, HTML, H1, how do you do, like, opening? Open parens, close parens. Or I don't know. <laughs> how do you mean that? Yeah, that one should be in angle bracket. Like UL, for example, like UL, opening bracket and closing. I'm still not tracking with you, like. Uh, for example, can you see uh, the HTML, how do you open like UL and closing UL? Just like that, the JSX should be in HTML closing bracket. Hey, what's, what's the problem? I'm hey, not, is this, I'm saying that the JSX should be, yeah, in a, in a, uh, wrapping you have to wrap it in a bracket oh because it's a HTML component part. yeah uh, okay oh, oh, oh like I... this could be jsx yeah then the jsx should be in the dump in the react dot dump you have to wrap it in angle bracket um um, um. so you could name this jsx no, 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 no. In, in React dump dot render, that's okay. That that okay. was nice. Um, I understand what he's talking about, but you, well, we haven't gotten there yet. Like component okay. and JSX are a little bit different. Like if you're referring to a component and a JSX, they're a little bit different. There's okay. functional. There's, there, there's like the stateless com functional you, stateless component. There's stateless. Component. I mean, did you run this? Does this work? I said, I, I said JSX yeah. and, uh, and components are different. Like when you get, like when you go further, like within the, the, um, the course, like you would know that JSX and components are a little bit different from each other. Like components sometimes actually uh, contain JSX. Like the component returns the JSX. So like the component returns the JSX. So it's still like, um, if you add a component, if you want to add a component to this React, React DOM, the render now, you would um, add like the um, the angle bracket uh -huh. and close it like the angle bracket. Then you add yeah. the name of the component. Then you yeah. close the, the component. But you get yes. there. You understand what I'm trying to say? I mean, uh, the the code that they have here is the same thing that we have. Yeah. Okay. Is, is, like, is, except is for this part, we didn't name it challenge code. Uh, but it's uh, okay. Not, what it, happened if you put it in angle bracket the J6 in dot render? Here. No, no, it doesn't have to be. It's a JSX. It doesn't have to be an angle bracket. If it's a component, now then you put it in angle bracket. If you are trying to render it, 
So what's it? is it not rendering now? This this is rendering, yeah. So what's the problem then? What are you guys trying to do? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what Jamal. What do you, what do you mean? Uh okay. Can you put it in the under bracket so that I I want to see what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We can do that. I mean, close like HTML, like this HTML less than and greater than. Put it in HTML less than and greater than like. The okay. JSX like. It's it doesn't work now. Uh, no, no, like, uh, for example, H1, how do you do, like, less than and greater than? Like, yes. put it inside less than. Oh, okay, okay. okay this yeah. part. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Open tag. Yeah. yeah. yeah and like, like, image self-closing, like, image, for example. Like an image, closing like, like self-closing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does this work? It will work, it will work. It will work. You can only do that for a component. You know, you know, like um, um, Jamal, you know, a component yeah. returns an AJSX. I don't know. Uh -huh. It's looking like it's different because this is a different yeah, color like, than it, this. A component, a component returns a JSX. So it's if you do that, same. if you do this with JSX, that means you are regarding as this a component. This constant. Yeah, it needs to still be the constant JSX because we haven't so filled we haven't what? filled the component JSX with anything yet. Mm -hmm. So, so this fails, right? Color. Yeah, it fails. You can only do that for a company, not a JSX, not a raw JSX. Yeah, we haven't. Yeah, oh, this is this I is mean. assigned to the constant. <laughs> so the the web component JSX is something entirely different from JSX, okay. the element or oh. the uh, the the constant. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> okay. But let's see. Yeah, now it works. Well, it did work. Yeah, now it works. Okay. Because it's uh, it's uh, calling the constant JSX, not the web component. Okay. But anyhow. Like the variable, okay. Yeah, the variable or the constant or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah. But yeah, that's fine. All right, I think we can go ahead and run this. Boom. Did everybody get that one? Only speak up if you didn't get it and you want you have a question. All right, I'm gonna move on. Define an HTML class in JSX. Now that you're getting comfortable writing JSX, you may be wondering how it differs from HTML. So far, it may seem that HTML and JSX are exactly the same. One key difference in JSX is that you can no longer use the word class to define HTML classes. This is because class is reversed, is a reverse word in JavaScript. Instead, JSX uses class name. In fact, the naming convention of an HTML attribute and for all HTML attributes and event references in JSX become camel case. For example, a click event in JSX is on click with capital C for the click instead of on click. Likewise, on change becomes on change with change being capitalized. While this is a subtle difference, it is an important one to keep in mind moving forward. Apply a class of my div to the div provided in the JSX code. All right. So, so for this one, we've got to apply Within, okay, so this is going to be a constant. So I've got to say class name now. Is that right? Equals. Good night, Andrew. My div. I don't have to do the render though. React dom dot. Dot render. 
And I don't think we just try to run it. If it doesn't go, then you should try to do the real the render. The real dumb the render. Yeah, it worked. Okay. All right. Let me just make a note of this. No, tomorrow. Did anybody have a question? I was hearing somebody in the background. Did anybody have a question that, uh, okay. Okay, Tamara had to go. Yeah. I'm just gonna probably go for another 20 minutes. So, um, if anybody else needs to leave before then, just let me know. All right, wait a minute. What was I doing? I was going back here. I'm just going to make a note. Um, challenge. The class names. The class is no longer used in JSX. For rendering, uh, naming conventions, our camel case, and therefore class becomes class name. Class name. Etc. Okay. All right. Class is no longer. You put the class is no longing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh -huh. No longer. Class versus class name. Okay. So comment that um, all right now let's jump back in we can go to the next one everybody with me anybody need more time had a question all right i guess not i right, learn about self-closing jsx tags i'm gonna get this little snippet and I'm gonna drop it in here. Oh, 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 that's what I did. Okay. All right, so far you've seen how JSX differs from HTML in a key way with the use of class name versus class for <coughs> defining HTML classes. Another important way in which JSX differs from HTML is in the idea of the self closing tag. <coughs> in HTML, almost all tags have both an opening and closing tag, div and close div. The closing tag always has a forward slash before the tag name that you are closing. However, there are special instances in HTML called self-closing tags or tags that don't require both an opening and closing tag before another tag can start. I think this is what you're talking about, Jamal. If I'm not mistaken. For example, the line break tag can be written as br or br space forward slash, but should never be written as br forward slash br since it doesn't contain any content. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> In JSX, the rules are different, a little different. Any JSX element can be written with a self-closing tag, and every element must be closed. The line break tag, for example, must always be written as br space close tag or forward slash. In order to be valid JSX, that can be transpiled. A div, on the other hand, can be written as div 
forward slash or div forward slash div closing so okay so we can close tag within one div the difference is that in the first syntax version there is no way to include anything in the div with the close tag you will see in later challenges that this syntax is useful when rendering react components Okay, so fix the errors in the code editor so that it is valid JSX and successfully transpiles. Make sure you don't change any of the content. You only need to close tags where they are needed. Where they are needed. Remove content, comment, and change code below this line. Okay. Move content. So they're wanting us to remove this, but then aren't they just wanting us to add a comment like like this? No, they have the H two, uh, no, no. the P tag, and no, the H R tag. We need to close those instead of. Uh, you just you just have to uncomment it to comment. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. I'm so totally lost. Line of comments out. Yeah. Yeah. To do the uh, comment. Okay. Uh, I see now. I was totally yeah. confused. Yeah. yeah, that wasn't very. Yeah. Clear. Okay. Yeah, I see now. Yeah. So that's the only two places. And it worked. Because we've got a horizontal rule and there's a break. Yeah. Okay. Let me just. Fun, 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 fun. I'm going to do this. Can I get that little snippet? And I'm actually going to just pop that in here. Okay. And I'm going to add a comment here. And practice with comments that all right. All right, save that. And boom. Okay, um, um Elliot. Yeah. I, I recommend you install um React Dev2 on, on your uh, React Dev2 extension on your uh, browser. Use use Google Chrome, right? Yeah. I I, I recommend you install React React Dev Two. It helps you like um you can actually um check your uh this thing on the browser console like check your your React code and all of that. Okay. So like uh, yeah. All the extensions here. React Dev Two, yeah. Okay, React Dev Two. Active. I can let me confirm this. Uh, it's not coming up. Let me just search for it. Let me confirm the spelling. React dev tool. Dev tools. Hold, hold on. Let me just, let me... Uh, React developer tools in the web store. Is that it? No. Uh, yeah, I think that this is it. This is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. is that? What, what uh, help me understand what this is doing. Like, you know, you know like with this, you can you can check you know, the way you actually can actually check your real code, on, like, you can check the model code on your uh, browser console. You can't do that if you don't have this particular extension. Okay, you want to share your screen and show us uh, demo? All of that is good for debugging. 
why don't you why don't you show us a uh, an example, DK? Okay, let me uh, render. Let me render. Hold on. Let me just render. How's everybody doing? Everybody good with that last bit? All right, good deal. Anybody got any questions? Anybody want to see anything like, I don't know. The, the most helpful point of our study sessions has been when we've kind of like jumped out of the tutorial and just toyed around with some playground code. So if there's an itch you want to scratch it, like let's, jump into a playground and like just toy around with it. That's, that's really where the learning takes place, honestly, is when you take it out of the tutorial and you just try to make something on your own without, you know, the tutorial feeding you everything, you know? DK, you ready? Okay, um, yes, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. You're still on your screen. Let me share. I just uh, share my screen. Oh, you may have to have. I may have to give you permissions. Oh, is the host. Um, which I don't think you should. Lap him. No, I, I think you have permissions to to share. DK, okay. I'm not sharing so. Hello. Oh, yeah, you can see? You can yeah, see this yeah, you're up. You can see your react. You'll be able to like, see your, like, the react, uh, your react code. Then when there's, an, when there's an error, you can easily like, look through your console and um, note where the error is, and you go back to your terminal, your editor, and work on it. Let me uh, render something um, different. OK, so I see. There's like, um, one sec. Stay on this screen, DK. So yeah, you you'll be able to view your. You'll be able to view your react code. Everybody, look where I'm uh, circling in the green. So that that is what. This is when you're you. Oh, cool, dude. Yeah, uh, that's me with the green circles, but. I wonder if they have that Firefox. Yeah. So that's what's popping up when you got that extension? Yeah. So you'll be able to like view your React code yeah, and all of that. Okay. And, and, it's showing you. and also you can see that the props are... Yeah, like over here, red. the children. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is like the parent is div and then the child is the H1. The text, yeah, the text. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's coming. Uh, we are not yet there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that's cool though. That's okay, a good. Uh, that's a good tip though, because whenever we can like jump into the console, it's important to understand these kind of things. Thank you. All right. Okay, you want to jump us back into the. Free code camp. Oh, you want me to work on some? Yeah, you can do the next one, DK. Okay. Oh. We're on uh, create a stateless functional component. Okay, this one. Okay. React. Uh, create a stateless functional component. Components are the core of React. Everything in React is a component. And here you will learn how to create one. There are two ways to create a real component. The first way to use a JavaScript function. Defining a component in this way creates a stateless or functional component. The concept of state in an application will be covered in later challenges. For now, 
think of a stateless component as one that can receive data and render it, but does not manage or track changes to that data. We recover the second way to create a, a React component in the next challenge. To create the component with a function, simply write a JavaScript function that returns either JSX or no. One important thing to note is that we require the function name in capital letter. Here is an example of, the stateless, of a stateless component that assigns an HTML class to um, JSX. And after being transpiled, we have a CSS class of custom class, um, demo component post function, which on the class name post custom class. Okay. Because a JSS component represents HTML, you could put several components together to create a component, a more complex HTML feed. This is one of the key advantages of the component architecture that data we have provided. It allows you to compose the UI from many separate isolated components. It makes it easier to build and maintain complex user interfaces. We could it as a function called um, my component. Note, the text is considered a child of the development. We will not be able to use our self with the text. The component should be done JSX. Okay, so yeah, return. Um, so what I was talking about earlier, that the component returns um, JSX. When you want to like, you have to like add, um, you know they are actually running the React, React DOM that um, render underneath. So if I to add that here, hmm. you can do this. Um, yeah. To add the component, we have to do this. Um, my component. my component. Yeah. Ah, okay. But if they are running that on the internet, I'm just trying to show you how you can how, 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 how to render a component. Okay. So okay. So any questions? So the constant has become a my component has become a component because yeah. it's a constant, but it's a it's also a function. Yeah, you can you can. Oh, I think you can you can do you can still I think you can still it. DK, you kind of low in volume, bro. DK, you still there? I'm there. I'm there. Yes. I am. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um then you can I think I um um play this on different lines. Let me just try to play it.
you can declare this way like a normal function but you just declare it that way so you won't be able to change that particular function later on elliot yeah you declare it as const so you'll be able to change it later on but you can still declare it um, like uh, you can declare it normally okay you can declare using a big arrow you can just do any you can define if any other uh, functions have been declared in javascript you can declare it that way for uh for a uh, function functional um stateless um component you can see the function there's there's a stateless component that one, that one actually inherits from um i think react or so so you can get there also so let's so any question yeah that's just something we'll have to review as we go along but okay I want to make sure mine passes. Hold on. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. Test. Test. Yeah, right, those React Dev tools are super cool. Huh? Hello. Yeah. Did hey. someone yeah. say something here? Yeah. Oh, uh, that was. Yeah. Uh, Ah, okay, there we go. Boom. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah. Yeah, I was just making sure that I, I understood it. Um I think we might uh I I think I've gone way over time for me because I gotta get up and do the we gotta do JavaScript in the morning. But uh I think this is good enough for now. Um, let's uh, let's stop here. So everybody, um, did anybody have any questions or anything else they wanted to see? When are you going to upload this? Uh, I'll I'll upload it tonight after we get off. Thank you. All right, yeah, I'm gonna go. Over it. If not, then I'll uh, I'll do it first thing in the morning before the JavaScript class. Yeah, that'd be helpful. I'm gonna go over it in the morning and uh. I'm gonna redo the first four of these on this. But uh, I know Andrew had a question about GitHub, but um, Andrew, go to the W3 Develops playlist, and there's a whole hour and a half and like an additional, I think either like 30 to 45 minutes where uh, Mesfin and uh, EB we went through that and then there was another time where mesfin and kara we went through it and um i think any any questions you have about github they they'll probably be answered in uh, those videos but we can always walk through it again um that probably the most helpful thing for you is maybe at the start of next class is we'll just let you uh Share your screen, and then we'll just walk you through your GitHub. GitHub is probably the easiest thing, but it could be a little intimidating at first. Yeah. Yeah, like, it really blew my mind how easy it was, though. Like, once I figured out it was that stinking easy, I was like, why haven't I been using this more? <laughs> you know? Like, right. oh my I, really recommend, I really recommend using... Um, the terminal to learn how to how to use git and github if you can use it with the terminal then you understand how, understand no, how i'm with you there dk and that that's the only way that's the way that we started out was just working within the temp the terminal then you you just be a little confused be dependent on that particular editor and that way and if that is out of the way then you have issues yeah i i, I, I would agree i think it's helpful to first learn how to use it in the terminal and then jump to what we're doing within VS code with the source source control panel. But, um, I definitely would suggest what you're saying to DK. Cause the, the, um, um, the, um, like the VS code uh, part of like, you can only do so much. So do something that will to yeah. Like that you, you need to understand the commands. Yeah, and just know there's only like five or six commands you're actually going to use. You're only going to use like git add, git mm -hmm. command, 
put when, it in there. When you, want to, re- when you like want to, you want to revert the pull, you can't use that. When you want to revert the pull request or you, or you commit, you can't use that. So you have to like name like the thing using the dummy now itself before like um using that part. I don't I don't even use like my own my my code because um GitHub and all of that. I just I'm really used to the time and I just I use the time every time. Yeah. All right. Let's uh I'm gonna stop the recording, but uh that was a good session. And uh please if you're watching this, uh leave a comment. Uh just uh, leave any comment about how you're learning this and uh, what your suggestions would be for projects. Uh, that would be helpful. Uh, if you have a link to a project that you suggest, drop that in the comments for us in the on the YouTube channel. All right. Thank you. Happy coding, everybody.